So here's the thing. My dining table is slightly too small for me to play a game of Warhammer 40k on it. Now there are a ton of tutorials on how to build a wargaming table. And while this would be undoubtedly cool, my apartment is just too small and I don't have space to build a second table. What I need is a game board, which is slightly bigger than my dining table, that I can then lay on top and just play 40k. I want it to be able to fold so that I can store it easily when I'm not using it. And I want it to be dry erase friendly so that I can draw on all my deployment zones and mark out where to put my objectives and then just erase them after the game. So let's get started. The first thing I did was to order two pieces of plywood from a local supplier and have them delivered to my apartment. Now in my country at least, most suppliers will give you the option to have your plywood cut to size so you don't even have to cut it yourself. Once I had the plywood, I grabbed my power drill and installed hinges on the edges of the boards. Now, it would have been more sturdy to install these hinges closer to the center of the board, but I wanted them to overhang the edges of my table so that they don't scratch my table and so that the board lies nice and flat. After that, I took off the hinges and sprayed on a base coat using some cheap tan spray paint. So as it turns out, it takes quite a bit of spray paint to cover an area this big. So I would recommend not buying anything too expensive because I ended up using two full cans of spray paint to cover this whole area. After that, my girlfriend and I grabbed some cheap paints and painted on an aerial view of our battleground. At this point, I also found out that my girlfriend is way better at painting than I am. Once it was done, we sprayed on a thin layer of matte lacquer. To make it dry erase friendly, we stuck on a layer of contact paper on the surface. This can be quite tricky to do on your own, so I suggest finding a friend to help you so that one of you can pull the contact paper taut, while the other one smooths it out to try and minimize the number of air bubbles that get trapped under the surface. After that, we lined the sides with clear tape to prevent the contact paper from peeling off too easily. We also decided to put some silicon furniture corner protectors on the edges of the board so that if someone walks into it, they won't get injured. Finally, we grabbed some anti-slip tape and stuck it on in little squares underneath the board. This is to prevent the board from sliding around while it's on the table. Alright, let's put the hinges back on and see how it looks. I think that's looking pretty decent. And with the contact paper on, we can draw whatever we want using whiteboard markers and erase it afterwards. This means that when I want to play a game, I can draw out deployment zones, mark out objectives, play a game, and then erase everything afterwards to set up for the next game. Here are some pictures of the board. Now you can see that we didn't manage to get all the air bubbles out from underneath the contact paper, but I think I can live with that. And you know what, if it's really bothering me, we can just take out the contact paper and apply a new layer. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, shout out to my friend Toby for letting me film part of our 40k game to use in this video. And of course, thank you to my beautiful girlfriend Kara for helping me out with this build. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.